In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Swagger and documenting our RESTful API. Swagger is a beautiful implementation on top of any RESTful API so that people using your API can get a sense of what it looks like with this operation and the data coming in and out. To make use of Swagger in our projects, I'm going to open up my RESTful API project. To enable Swagger in our application, I'll first going to get the dependencies of Swagger from our Maven repository. So for doing that, I'll open up Firefox and go to Maven repository. And in the Maven repository, the dependencies that we're looking for is Spring Fox and Swagger and the UI of the Swagger. All right, let's go it. And the last version is 2.6.1. And let's copy the dependency right here and include it in our project. In our POM file, I'm going to go down to the dependencies part and simply paste it. All right. And the other dependency that we need is the SpringFox Swagger 2, which is the main dependency. And I'll say SpringFox Swagger 2. And here we have it. And we're also going to get the 2.6.1. And I'll copy the dependency and switch back to my IDE. And let's also paste it right here. And here we go. We have our Swagger dependencies ready to build upon. So to actually start building Swagger in our application, we have to be starting off with a configuration class for Swagger. So for that purpose, I'm going to create a configuration package and name it as config. And in that config package, I'm going to have a Swagger config class. Within that class, let's first say this is a configuration class. All right. Now, we are going to do a Swagger configuration within this entire class. The starting point for all the configuration that we have is the enable Swagger 2 annotation. With this annotation, we're getting the most functionality for Swagger 2. And after that, we're going to be including our controller in the component scan so that Swagger configuration can scan our controllers and attach itself to them. So for doing that, I'm going to say component scan, component scan, and I'll provide the base package classes as product controller dot class. All right. And the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to provide a property source for Swagger properties. And so for doing that, I'm going to say property source. And within that property source, I'm going to be including my properties within my class path. And that properties file is going to be named as swagger.properties. Let's copy the name and create this class, create this properties file right away. So I'll copy it and in my resource files, I'll create a new file and simply paste the name. All right, let's switch back to our Swagger configuration and start configuring our Swagger. For any API that you have, you have to be providing a version and a license text. For those texts, I'm going to be providing private properties here. So private 
static and final string swagger API version. So let's name our API version as 1.0 and also provide a license text. So private static final and license text and our license text is simply going to say license all right we're also going to provide a title and a description for our swagger documentation so for doing that i'm going to say private static final string and the title is going to be products rest api and for the description i'm going to say string again and description is going to be restful and let's fix that and restful api for products all right we have our static variables so that we can use within our configuration for our configuration we're going to be doing two things first we're going to be creating an api info and with that api info we're going to be creating a ducket which is the main type of swagger with that ducket we're going to be providing the specifics of our RESTful API and like the path that we're going to serve our RESTful documentation for Swagger and all the other configurations that we're going to have. Let's start by our API info and say private API info and our API info is going to be simply named as API info so that we can reference it within our docket configuration and within our API info I'm going to say return new API info builder and after that I'm going to provide my title as the title that I created and description as the description I have and then license as the license variable that I created right above and after that I'm going to provide the version as the swagger API version I provided and then I'm simply going to say build all right we have our API info and to make use of our API info I'm now going to create a ducket and for that ducket let's say public ducket is going to be products API and then let's start configuring our ducket in our ducket I'm going to say return new ducket and inside it i'm going to be saying the documentation type and the documentation type is going to be for swagger 2 and after that i'm going to be providing my api info the one that i provided above and i'm also going to be providing my path mapping the actual path that i'm going to be serving my api and I'm going to be using my roof path and then I'm going to be saying that select this configuration and then add the paths for my RESTful documentation and those paths is going to be done by the regular expressions so I'm going to use a path selectors and I'll provide a regular expression now and that regular expression is going to be like API dot and asterisk 
So I'm simply saying that anything after API is included in my Swagger documentation and I'm fine with it so I can say simply build it. The final step in our Swagger configuration is we're going to say that our docket is a spring bean so that it can be component scanned and adjusted as the way we like it. All right? We have our Swagger configuration right now. For the final touches, we have to go to our controller and provide some specific details of our operations. So let's go to our controller class. In our controller class, the first thing that we're going to provide is the API annotation. With this API annotation, we can simply say about the API that we have. And for the value, I'm going to say this is the products controller API. And for the producers, I'm going to say this is going to be providing a JSON to my users. And I'm going to say application JSON value. And in my actual operations, I'm going to say the get operation that I have is going to be returning my users. Get operation that I have is going to be annotated as API operation. And this API operation gets the product with specific ID. All right. And of course, I can provide some API responses. And within the API responses, I'm going to provide the value as, let's say, API response. And the first response that we're going to have is 200. And the message for that 200 is OK. All right. The response type that we're going to returning to our user is type of product that class. All right. Now let's check out our Swagger documentation and see what it looks like. To do that, I'm going to run my application now. Our application is starting up now. And here we go. And as you can see from the console output, we have some new console outputs right here. The line says that found one custom documentation plugins. And that plugin is the Swagger configuration that we included in our application. So to check it out, I'm going to open up the Firefox. And go to my application. So it is under localhost and ADAD. For Swagger, I'm going to be using Swagger dash UI dot HTML. This is the default page for Swagger annotations. So you can simply override it, but if you don't want to make any specific configuration, you can use Swagger dash UI. So let's hit enter and see our Swagger API documentation. And here we go. We have our beautiful UI with Swagger. And as you can see, we have our product controller scanned and listed right here. Let's click on it. And here we go. We have all of our operations for our products. We have post operation. We have our delete operation. We have our get operation with the text that we provided with the API operation annotation. And we also have the put operation. For the title, we can see the title that we provided. And for the description, we provided the RESTful API for products. 
And as you can see here, our version is 1.0. As you can see with this very basic configuration, working with Swagger and documenting your RESTful API is very easy. And if we go to the details of any of your operation, you can see the response class that we provided within our API operations. And you can see the beautified version of your example value of your entity model. And you can easily make requests for your API within this beautiful section. You can provide an ID and you can simply hit the try it out button. As you can see, even with this simple configuration, you can have a full-fledged RESTful API documentation with Swagger. And it has a beautiful and nice UI for showing and displaying your operations. I hope you enjoyed it and you can use this Swagger documentation in any of your application with ease just like I did in my project.